ago. The search began for the best home cooks to compete in the world's biggest cooking competition. Master Chef! Master Chef! They came out by the thousands from every corner of America. New York City! Los Angeles! Chicago! All in pursuit of a place in the Master Chef kitchen. It's perfectly seasoned. Really good. A professional cook would be proud to put a dish together as good as this. That is one of the best dishes I've ever tasted. Thank so you. But only the chosen few will get to prove themselves to three of the biggest names in the culinary world. Graham Elliott, Joe Bastianich, and Gordon Ramsay. Go! Those who make it will have to face some of the most intense... Speed up, everybody! ...and extreme challenges MasterChef has ever seen. This is ridiculous. That will push everybody... Come on! Please. ...to their breaking point. You better shut up, or I'm gonna knock to you to the out. They'll serve under the stars, as well as for them... Eva Fungoria! Oh, my God! Shut up! The amazing Jane Lynch. Welcome... Hey, this is the biggest cooking competition show in America. It's a battle for the title of Master Chef, a quarter of a million dollars, and their own cookbook. Tonight, the competition reaches a whole new level. Yeah! This is the biggest challenge of your life. the final day of the auditions as the last of the home cooks from across the country arrive ready to pursue their culinary dreams. I'm here at MasterChef because my dream is to open up my own little Italian restaurant, but really authentic. My daughter said, Dada, you, you go win. You know, someone can go home and go back to their lives and be fine, but I can't. Like, I have to win for her. It's a competition, and I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to do what I love the most, which is cooking, and win it all. As the judges take their places for the final round, our home cooks have just one shot to prove they have what it takes to become a master chef. This is huge, man. This is huge. First up is Howard, a 26-year-old U.S. Army veteran from San Diego who's now on a mission to win a Master Chef apron. Baking powder. I love to cook. I believe that what I have is a skill, and I'm very passionate about everything that has to do with food and wine. I love it. I was a crazy adolescent, and uh, 21 came around, and I needed change, and I joined the U.S. Army. I did 12 months as an assistant machine gunner in Afghanistan. We lost a lot of guys out there, guys who had all these plans that, hey, when I get out, you know, all we would do is, is talk about what we were gonna do when we got home. Pretty good? So now I'm back, and I'm extremely determined to make the most out of the life that I have now because of my buddies that don't have the opportunity to do it themselves. I will be America's next master chef. See you guys soon! Each home cook is given just five minutes to plate up their dish. If two of the three judges think they have what it takes, they'll win a coveted Master Chef apron and move on to the next stage of the competition. Hello, gentlemen. First name is? My name's Howard. From where? San Diego, California. And what are you cooking? I'm cooking a bourbon peach blackberry cobbler for you today. Uh, you got five minutes. Off you go. The love of food comes from where? My lovely grandma, she is an amazing cook. I mean, she taught me how to cook. That's where it all started. Coming back from the army, I'm uh, trying to pursue it 100%. What were you doing in the military? Served in Afghanistan. I was a uh, assistant machine gunner on a 240 Bravo team. You know, you go over there, you work with a lot of great men, and some of them didn't come home. We lost 22 guys in, uh, in 12 months. How do you think serving in the military can better you as a cook? Discipline, attention to detail is the biggest thing. In the, in the culinary industry, if you can't pay attention to detail, you're not going to succeed. Time's up. There you go. Why the blackberries with peach? It adds color to it. It adds an extra sweetness to it that, that the peaches don't put out. The way you've done it, it's uh, rustic. It's charming. Thank you. And all the alcohol in there. What's in there? It's bourbon. Yeah. Caramelized peaches? Yes, chef. A little amaretto. Okay. A little bourbon. The graham cracker, the panko. I've never seen that used before, but okay. it adds crunch. 
so it takes a lot of courage to come in here and present a dessert. I have a lot more to show, a lot more to bring to the table. It's a very good home dessert. Mm. Thank you. Topping's nice, peaches, tasty, but I'm struggling because of the amount of sort of bourbon you've got in there. Yes, chef. I'm a no. Graham. It's difficult. It's hard. I mean, it's got some great flavor and some complexity. I like the crust. The alcohol's really strong. All right, I'm going to be a yes. I'm going to go out on a limb and see what else you can do. But now it's up to Joe. Let's take a walk. Well, I got some news. Howard has a ton of potential. I feel on top of the world right now. Like nothing can crush me, and this is like the, this is like the, one of the greatest moments ever. I'm going to prove to Graham and Joe that they made the right choice in giving me this apron right here. Woo! I am going to be the next Master Chef. So Howard wins an apron. But as the auditions come to a close, Judges? the path to a white apron doesn't get any easier. What I have here is a white chocolate spaghetti with a strawberry puree and lemon cake garlic bread. I brought along my babies to symbolize my love of cooking. Oh, I am a firefighter for Cleveland, Ohio. I did a stuffed egg plant. Love the ambition, but the best thing on that plate is the soft boiled egg. I'm a no. I charred my uh, short ribs. Hopefully you guys can see beyond that and just look at the potential instead. We have to judge you on what you've done, not on what you've burnt. I'm sorry, it's a no. It would be below par in any restaurant, no. It's not screaming Master Chef, no. Thank you, but no thanks. I don't think it's the quality we're looking for. I'm a no. I'm sorry, it's a no for me. Is that America's Next Master Chef? No. After these disappointing dishes, can the very last home cook of this year's auditions take home an apron? Johnny is a 28-year-old carpenter from Marlboro. What's going on, guys? Hi, how are you? Last guy of the day. Still hungry? Yep. Perfect. Uh, first name is? Johnny B. Johnny B. Good to see you, bud. What are you cooking? I'm making uh, lobster cracker jacks. Lobster ah. cracker jacks. you got five minutes. Okay. And what's your day job? What do you do for a living? I'm a carpenter, but I want to pursue food and see what I can do with it. I like the way you utilize a beer bottle for a rolling pin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're pretty spoiled with lobster on the East Coast. My friends and I are usually hanging out on the deck, staring out over the ocean, and the, the utensils aren't always around, so we're, uh, you know, everybody's always got a beer bottle in their hand. But lobster, popcorn, nuts, and caramel. <laughs> yeah. Served in a cocktail glass. Yeah. You know, it's bizarre. Is this something you've done before, though? I've done it a couple times. Okay. People love it. Everybody keeps asking me for more, so I think that's a good sign. Great. Right. Right. You're smirking. What's going on, Johnny B? How are you? Good. Pleasure to meet you. Probably don't hear this much, but you're, you're a lot smaller in person than I thought you were going to be. <laughs> Camera adds about 180 pounds. All right. Coconut, caramel, lobster. Salty, sweet. Buttery, crunchy. crunchy. Butter. <sighs> this is one of those things that either works or it doesn't. Exactly. I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna fall hard. Popcorn should never go. 
with lobster. Yeah. But cashews, coconut. It's so out there, I don't even know. Yeah, you have nothing to compare it to. All right. Um, popcorn and lobster. Yeah. That doesn't read well on the menu. The last home cook of this year's Master Chef auditions, Johnny, a 28-year-old carpenter, has ended the day with an unexpected dish. A lobster cracker jacks. Popcorn should never go with lobster. Popcorn and lobster? Yeah. That doesn't read well on the menu. But there's something intriguing about that because I, you know, I'm forced to say it. It actually works. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah. For me, it's a 100% yes because it was absolutely delicious in a very weird, exciting way. Perfect. Thank you. Joe. Sure. This is like MasterChef, so you're going to have to be cook Italian and Asian, and we're going to put you through challenges. Is this like a, a little trick? You come here and try to dazzle us, or you got what it takes? I don't think it's a trick. I think I have what it takes. You know, I, I can hang. I'm on for the ride. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Graham, love it. Love it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Congratulations. Cross, cross the board. <laughs> Three big yeses. Well done. Oh, good job. Thank you very much. This is like a yes. But this is like an out there yes. Okay. Yeah, so you gotta like, you, gotta, you gotta reel it in here because like, you kind of like maybe bamboozled us a little bit. All right. Now you gotta take the next step. All right. right. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Why does that work? You can't stop eating it. Kind of weirdly good. I'm feeling pretty friggin' stoked right now. This apron's the first step on the journey. You know, the most important meal's the next one. I'm ready to go, so bring it on. I'm the next master chef. So Johnny is the final home cook to win an apron. He now joins all the other contenders trying to move on in the competition. The longest journey always starts with one step, and that's really what this is for me. You have no idea how excellent this feels. <laughs> I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a pastor. I am a model. I'm an ex-NFL player. I'm a housewife. The safe bread lets me know that I really am good at what I do, and that means the world to me. I did this for my mom. This is all for my mom. She would be blown away that I was even in this situation. Congratulations. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Give this to your mom. This is everything to us. And I'm going to fight to keep that apron. I got to learn. I got to grow. I got to really apply myself here and go hard. This is the beginning of a journey. This is the first in many long trials to become the next Master Chef. Now, the surviving home cooks who have been awarded aprons must fight their way into the Master Chef kitchen where the ultimate battle awaits. Congratulations on making it this far. Each and every one of you were all good enough to earn an apron. But after this next challenge, we'll be taking a lot of those aprons back. I'm super excited to see some of these people go because I don't feel that everybody that got an apron deserved that apron. I'm not even thinking about if I'm going home today. I am home. Follow us. Let's go. We're walking down this dark corridor. The adrenaline is coursing through my veins. There's a gentle level of horror walking down the hall, and then you're by that same door again where your fate was started, and it's just profound. The doors open, and I see like the lights and the cook stations, and I'm like, game face, bitch! Welcome to your first MasterChef challenge. <laughs> this is your biggest, scariest challenge of your lives.
Pretty cute, right? And delicious. <laughs> Don't worry. You will not be cooking this little guy. Take a look behind you. in the world and every year it is gaining popularity in america it's an incredibly versatile meat and it has such a unique flavor there are so many parts of the animal that you can use and so many ways that you can use them so you are probably wondering which part of the lamb we're going to give you well let me tell you all of them there isn't a single piece of lamb we haven't given you. To help you come up with this magnificent dish, you have full use of the MasterChef pantry. That pantry has every ingredient imaginable to make your lamb dish shine. You name it, that pantry has it. It's all on this. Shine and you'll move on. Make a mistake and you'll be like a lamb to the slaughter. You have just 60 minutes to cook us the best lamb dish of your entire life. Are you ready? Yeah. Your 60 minutes starts now. Oh my gosh. Don't touch me. They are rich. Are you ready? Your 60 minutes starts now. I'm running to the pantry when this woman shoves me. She actually pushes me down. This competition is not for the weak hearted. <laughs> uh, an amazing list of ingredients in that pantry. I mean, how could you not make a dish thing? Right, it's a veritable that. Garden of Eden. There's mm -hmm. everything in there that one could want to cook. A dream. So this is where the winners discern themselves from the losers, in my opinion. You've got to shop smart. You've got to really make some strategic decisions. 90 seconds shopping should be enough. Everything should be planned again. You should spend your time cooking. Exactly. A master chef has to be confident. So you sure. know when you go in there exactly yeah. what you need. 60 minutes isn't long, is it? Goes by super fast. Half of these people are going home. And that's kind of a really good motivator and really do my best in this dish. I'm making borrego con chiles. It's gonna be a little spicy, with a little bit of sweet, something a little bit of coconut milk in it. I'm gonna work as hard as I can to try to hold on to that apron. All right, Malcolm, what are you making? I'm making a lamb sampler plate. Is that like I'm not confident enough to do one dish, so I'm going to throw a whole bunch of stuff at you guys so I don't no, get eliminated? No, it's a I'm not a one-trick pony type guy trying to give you guys a recipe of food. You don't have to country. show us everything today. You just have to show us one dish that keeps you here. Right, Beth, why is it not in the oven? Because I'm going to sizzle it. So you're cooking it on hay? Uh-huh. You damped the hay slightly? Yes, Otherwise, yes. you know what's going to happen there? I don't want it to catch on fire. What no. are you serving with it? I am serving a celeriac and rutabaga puree and buttermilk fried sweet bread. That's a lot to put off in just under 30 minutes. Yes, it Good is. Good luck. Let's go. One dish to keep you in the competition. Luca, walk me through what we have. I'm stuffing a loin okay. with sweet bread and dive and goat cheese. Trying to do something that I would be proud to serve at my restaurant. Okay. Just make sure they don't get overcooked. Just watch that. Ryan, what are you doing? The rack of lamb. I, I Frenched the rack, and then basically I cut it into individual portions of double chops, and I basically wrapped rosemary around the bone. Rosemary around the bone? That's correct. I think you've gone around the bent. I get that a lot. Wow. Some individuals out there are panicking. 
They're forgetting the complete, simple task, right. and they're overcomplicating it. Still not right. James Lads, completely out of his depth. I mean, thinking way out the box, but accomplishing nothing. Right. The I idea agree. of taking something like ribs makes sense. Cola, okay, I get it. The way that he has those together are horrendous. I think Lynn has conceptualized an incredible restaurant dish. You know, he's doing pickled shallots and uh, wow. a lot of, a lot of technique. Yeah, there's some people now showing their true colors and they need to be dealt with and eliminated from this kitchen. You have 15 minutes left. We have seen enough from some of you. And right now, Joe is going to start collecting some aprons. Whoa, this just got real. I'm shocked. I had no idea aprons were going to start being taken. I had no idea people could get eliminated during the cooking. We've seen enough. Turn up your range. Give me your apron, please. You have 15 minutes left. We have seen enough from some of you. And right now, Joe is going to start collecting some aprons. You have to put them out there, misery. Gabriella. Turn your stove off. Give me your apron. No. Too many technical mistakes. Hi, Bree. Hi, Joe. When Joe Vasianich is two feet away from you, that is terrifying. If I screw up even a little bit, I could be gone in a second. James? Turn around. Oh, We've seen enough. Turn off your ranges. Give me your apron, please. Wow. Okay. It's time to leave the competition. Good luck uh, to you, my friend. You Good Goodbye. Luck. Well, I did not see Joe coming today, and I'm disappointed. Stupid mistakes. Savannah? Mm-hmm. That's looking really good. Thank you. Brian, turn up your range. We've seen enough. Time to go home. Please give me your apron. Thank nice you very the much. I really appreciate it. I am a little surprised. Um, I really wish I had a little more of an opportunity to use some of my culinary knowledge. Um, but at the same time, I know I'm a little out of my league. There we go. Two minutes to go. Too much, too much. So right now, I'm really on a push. I want to hold on to this apron so bad right now. I'm telling you right now, I'm knocking the competition right out today. The competition right here next to me right here, let me tell you what, she doesn't have the passion and the heart like I do. <laughs> to make it happen today. I'm doing it, baby. 30 seconds to go. Ah. Come on. Finishing touches. Oh. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, and stop! Woo! Your first challenge is over! Gordon, Joe, and Graham will now take one last look. Based on what they sampled and observed throughout the challenge, they will then divide the remaining home cooks... Dean! ...into three groups. Adriana. Kevin, the pastor. Hearing my name called, I don't know what this means. It could be good or bad. I'm very nervous. I want to see that kitchen. Natasha. Honestly, this competition is twisted. I don't know what's going to happen at any given moment. And finally, Eddie. Some of you have already impressed us enough to know that you belong in the MasterChef kitchen. The good news is one of these two groups is moving forward to the master chef kitchen the bad news is the other group is going home oh my god right now i'm so nervous i want to change my life change my kids life i hope i really really make it in the kitchen i'm in the group to the left and i think that the cooks they had on the right 
are awesome cooks. I mean, am I going home? What's going to happen? This group here, you are all going to the Master Chef Kitchen. Congratulations. <laughs> Dude, if the fire was not burning in me before, it is now. Like, I am ready to fight. I'm ready to do this. Congratulations. Great job. Yeah. I'm sorry. It just wasn't good enough. Please take your aprons off and leave the competition. The judges are really missing out on Ducky. They will see me in the future. And you know what? I'm going to be there with my head held high and a big smile on my face because, you know what? I'm going to make it. <laughs> Chef Ramsey's made this decision. I'm still at my station. Are they going to call my name? What's going on? The eight of you that are left, we're not so sure about you. That's why we want to taste your completed dishes. Please, bring your dishes to the front. The judges are tasting our dishes. My heart immediately goes to my throat, and I feel like I can't breathe. OK, we're going to taste each of your completed dishes, and then decide who's in and who's out. Malcolm and Samira, please, let's go. I'm a little nervous right now. I'm not prepared to go home yet. I want to get in this master chef kitchen bad. Let's go. Malcolm, first up. Explain the dish. Uh, lamb trio. I did a sausage with a Dijon cilantro, chopped, grilled it up medium, and a loin salad. And the lamb, you said, is medium, the temperature? Medium rare. Medium rare. You're right. It's medium rare. Thank you. Let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. Good flavor, however, it's pretty dry. Each component on its own, there's something that could be better, but you pretty much pulled it off. Samir, let's go, please. Thank you. OK. Explain the dish, please. It's cottagno with a charmelade sauce, and I made a Casablanca couscous with it. And what temperature were you looking at for the lamb? Um, about medium, medium well. That's how I like my lamb. And who are you cooking for, you or the judges? Couscous done with more seasoning. The lamb is delicious, and that sauce really blends the sweet and sour effect. Thank you. You're welcome, chef. Is this, is this a dish you invented today or something you've done before? No, I invented it today. What did you rub the lamb with? Um, I use a little bit of paprika. I use thyme and oregano. You should have maybe used a little salt. OK. After tasting these two dishes, it's clear only one of you has the skill to progress into the MasterChef kitchen. I need this for my daughter. I need this for myself. I can't come home a loser. Like, I can't do that. Everything is at stake for me. I stopped school, so I have to show my family that I can do this. After tasting these two dishes, it's clear only one of you has the skill to progress into the MasterChef kitchen. Malcolm. Congratulations. Great job. Those chops were amazing. Well done. I'm so happy. I can't smile. I can't breathe. And I got to be thankful for the opportunity that these great people are giving me. I'm sorry, Samira, but your time in MasterChef is done. Please take your apron off and leave the competition.
This really, really, really sucks. Having to just be sent home like this based on a dish that you thought was your best and just to know that it wasn't enough. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Okay, the next two dishes we want to taste, Johnny and Brian. Johnny, let's taste. Tell me exactly what it is. It's a lamb rangoon with a tzatziki coleslaw, with a red bell pepper garlic oil, and a ginger mint oil. The hallmark of a good rangoon is having enough filling and not just having the, the crispy wonton wrapper. It's simple. I don't know if it's got enough, you know, oomph to it, but it is tasty. All right, so if it's good, you're in. If it's bad, you go home. What are the flavors in here? In the rangoon or in the, in the coleslaw? It's coleslaw. It's um, dill, parsley, Greek yogurt, salt, pepper. Brian, time to taste your dish. Set it up for me. Let me know what it is. It's a Southwest liver and onion with a cactus salad and a boysenberry sauce for the liver. I like my livers uh, a little less cooked. The knife works beautiful. The boysenberry sauce? I was hoping for a little more acid just to kind of cut through that, you know? Just looking at the other dish, um, the gentleman that was just up here, I feel that um, I'll be going to the Master Chef kitchen. Okay. Brian, what were you thinking putting that on the plate? Because it looks like you murdered the lamb. Splat, splat, splat. Why does this dish mean so much to you? It's the most beautiful dish that I've cooked, ever. That's the most beautiful dish you've ever cooked? Yes, it is. Thank you, Brian. Johnny, Brian, both of you are not going to the MasterChef kitchen. Just one of you is. And that one person is... Johnny, congratulations. Please join the others. Good job, I'm very happy to come here and do this. It was an amazing opportunity. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to go back home and do my thing, blowing up trees, getting me some roadkill, shooting some squirrels. I'm just going to enjoy the rest of my life. OK, please step forward. Nancy and Brie. Let's begin with Nancy. Tell me about your dish. It's a lamb chop with roasted red pepper, the cauliflower mint puree, mm -hmm. and artichokes. It's a well-constructed dish. It's intelligent. It has some, like, restaurant thought behind it. I think that this sauce is just kind of like the garlic is way too strong for me. I'm going to disagree. The sauce with the lamb is really good. I like it with the feta as well. The puree, I would have liked it smoother. It's kind of grainy. It almost, you know, comes across as grit. OK, Bree, step forward, please. I call it Four Seasons Lamb, spring, summer, fall, and winter. When's the last time you've cooked lamb? I'm a vegetarian, so I've never cooked lamb. I think the plate's intelligent. I think that if you had more experience cooking and eating meat, you could have made it even better. The purees work. The seasoning you've got right. But it's, you know, less is more. Do one way. Stunning. And be really happy with it done beautifully. Thank you, Chef. Well, we were impressed with both dishes, but ultimately only one of you is coming into the MasterChef kitchen. Nancy? Yes, sir. It's not you, it's Brie. Please take your apron off. Thank you, Nancy.
And then there were two. Let's go. Luca, first, please. Okay, explain the dish. It's a loin mm -hmm. that I filled with some uh, sweetbreads, mm -hmm. endive, and goat cheese. So where did you see sweetbread stuffed inside lamb before? Nowhere. Nowhere. So the cook on the lamb, positive. But you're playing a very dangerous game, stuffing a loin with sweetbreads. Thank you, Luca. Thank you. Ah, uh, Luca, why don't you make something you, you know? Because I always have the idea that I want to try to do something yeah, that I put this... in my restaurant one day. Is this the time to take that chance? You tell me, sir. sir. We'll tell you. The lamb is tender. Vegetables are actually cooked pretty well. We'll see. Thank you. Beth, let's go, please. It is lavender hay roasted loin with buttermilk fried sweetbreads, apricot chutney, mint, and a celeriac and rutabaga puree. When you cook lamb that fast and let it rest for that length of time, you've got to remove all that sinew. So you've got the temperature absolutely perfect, but you've left part of that fat on. However, the concept was very smart, but the delivery wasn't as good. That lamb could have been perfect. What a shame. So the idea of cooking in hay, I love it. It's great. Beautiful technique. Imparts a lot of flavor. The thing that I really wish that you had done was cook that lamb a little less and then sear it in the pan just at the end to give it a little bit of that caramelized exterior. Thanks. Thank you. Two very different dishes. Both in sweetbreads. Need a little sear on the outside. Yeah. Nice ambitious technique though. What do you think? Ready? Yeah. Um, let me tell you. Two very talented home cooks. Luca, Beth. Tough decision this one. Very tough. I really, really want to keep this apron because the chance to be taught by some of the best chefs in the world means everything to me. I came here again for the second year because I know I can do it. And going home right now is just way too early. You know that not everyone gets a place in the MasterChef kitchen. Let me tell you, two very talented home cooks, Luca, Beth, good job, tough decision this one, very tough. And you know that not everyone gets a place in the MasterChef kitchen. Beth, your dish was... Outstanding. You've made it to the Mouse Chef Kitchen. Great job. Well done. Truly outstanding. When they say my name and that I'm through, <laughs> I mean, like, the relief I cannot describe in that moment. It was just an amazing moment. Truly outstanding. Great job. Luca, listen, I know how hard you've worked to get here. You didn't get this far last season. And you've worked so hard over this past 12 months. And you know what? I know how much this means to you. But not everybody can come into the MasterChef kitchen. You're a great home cook. A lot of passion. Keep cooking, please. Do not let this be the end of your culinary dream. Let it just be 
the beginning because you've made it. To the <laughs> He said my name. He killed me. I lost like five years of my life. But I made it. I'm gonna get the heart attack. <laughs> All of you, come and stand in front, please. Well done. Great job. Well done. Wow. Next time we see you, all of you will be in the most incredible, the most amazing kitchen in America. The MasterChef kitchen. Woo! But believe it, because when I say the competition is on, I mean it is on. Get some sleep, because you're going to need it. Good night and well done. Next time on MasterChef. It's day one in the Master Chef Kitchen. You just walked into a candy store. Oh my goodness, this is our home now. This is the kitchen of your dream. And the best home cooks in America begin the battle for the ultimate culinary title. And from the start, it's all out war. We underestimated the wrong person. Keep cooking, shut your mouth. She hates me. She hates you. And there's no room for error as an instant uh. elimination rocks the competition. But that's the best you can do. I'll put you out your misery. One potato, two potato.